the magic of YouTube. Right, hey guys, <laughs> it's uh, Two Guys T and D&D. It's been a long time since I've appeared on this channel. Lionel has been killing it without me. Um, it's all good. So today we're doing some uh, some cartography. This is number five, I think. But this time I have someone much better than I am um, to join me. Much more exciting. What, 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 much better, much better than you are at just, what? Just at life, <laughs> generally. At, at mercy and the end of list. Yes, at mercy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, hi guys. Actually, I'm I'm really uh, excited to be on here because I have been feeling some maps. I've been feeling like world building on a paper level, on a tangible, physical, visual level, and. Oftentimes, so much of world building is coming up with cool concepts and cool ideas and cool villains and cool stories. Uh, and when you can finally put that into a visual form, that's that's the treat. That's like the the carrot at the end of the stick, I think. And I'm excited to get started doing some of that for my own homebrew world. And we'll probably talk about other worlds too. Yeah, so, I mean, what are you currently going to start? Let's just start with that. So, all right, so let me, I'm actually pulling up a map right now. You're going digital today. Well, I'm not. I, I the, the computer is only here for inspiration. First of all, I have a really, really cool book here that we got in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, and it's all about, it's called uh, Antique Maps, an introduction to the history of maps and how to appreciate them. And it's just kind of a cool hardcover book and it's just filled with different old school maps. My favorite one that I'm looking at now, and I'll make sure that you can see this on the, on the stream here, is this map of Ireland, where it's actually, because Ireland, of, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> Ireland should be like this. I don't know if you've seen me reverse like yeah. I do, but, uh, but this map, is, I've never, I just never seen it that way. And immediately my attention was, brought to the map wondering, wait, what is this? What's happening here? And it's kind of amazing. I just love old maps. Upside down, isn't it Westeros? Yeah, uh, sort of. Actually, there's a, if you take, I actually like don't know what it's, Island together. I don't know what it's called now. I know what it's called in Crusader Kings 2. Mumu, that area with the, yes. that's the fingers, right? That's, the, if you yeah. take those and you transplant them onto the east side of the continent, of a long continent, you have you see Peter Baelish all of a sudden start running across them. So it's yeah. uh, it's very it's inspired. Obviously, I, I can't imagine it wasn't because it fits so perfectly. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure George R. R. Martin will never say. Actually, I don't know. That guy's a a world builder that doesn't give any craps anymore. He's just he probably would straight up admit. Oh yeah, I took yeah. some Ireland so much money. He just doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, he lives near us. Does he? Nice. Yeah, in Santa Fe. Um, but the reason I'm looking at historical maps for me is because I want to do some world building, some mapping of Enkea, which is like a Napoleonic setting. And it's not quite it, it listen, right now we are kickstarting Shadows Over Drift Chapel. And this process of building Drift Chapel has actually been a process of building the world of Gloam which is a really cool flintlock fantasy sort of colonial setting. And in, in, in building it and creating it, it's become, well, it hasn't become, but Enkea has appeared naturally as the antithesis of Gloam. And so we have some cool ideas about how they might be close to each other, connected tidally or something like that. But um, these, any, any time, you know, Tim or Matt or someone comes up with a really cool idea for the setting or the, you know, an idea for what the map might look like if we hit that stretch goal. Um, you know, these, these always inspire me to do stuff in my own world. And so I think that part of a Napoleonic setting is what I'm doing right now, which is what I'm doing on my computer to answer your first question is I'm pulling up a map of the Holy Roman empire to uh yeah. which is a little pre-napoleonic but it's um you're currently over 200 percent funded by the way what's that you're 200 funded 
you guys are amazing. That's a the building. people, freaking people in the AbTab group and the people, uh, that's just, it always blows us away, man. It blows us away so every time. Translate into dollars. I want to see how close we are to the scratch goals. Oh, yep. You got to translate it to, to the bucks, man. The American it's dollar. Some dollars, actually. Because um, Ecuador, where I'm going in a week, uses dollars. Uh, American dollars, eh? Yeah. In Ecuador. might have their own currency how, as well. I don't know. How strange that Central American countries are oftentimes backed by American currency. What a weird coincidence. Mm. Uh, <laughs> why You should tell the people watching. You should tell the people watching why you are going to ecuador oh it's it's for my education i'm a master's student in evolution so i'm going to the galapagos islands to study finches i'm so jealous envious yeah. envious my entire family is very angry at me that they can't also come okay i was gonna <laughs> say yeah that must be the reason yeah oh man one thing about the Holy Roman Empire, if anyone's watching and wants to Google this, Google a map of the Holy Roman Empire and just look at how screwed up it is. It's that's weird. Yeah, it's the beginnings of, you know, a lot of people might explain this as the beginnings of, like this is the first time, one of the first times in history where nations weren't geographical expressions, right? Uh, Italy is Italy because you see it there surrounded by water. So of course that's Italy. You know, Carpathia, where Romania is, is kind of uh, surrounded by mountains. And so for a long time, that was a country because the geographical, the natural features defined the borders of the country. And now, or not now, but in the days of the Holy Roman Empire, that kind of stopped being the case mm -hmm. because you could own land, even if you could own land over here, even if your capital was over here and there were three countries between you because you are the one in power, you are the one with the money, the, the ability to travel between places. Um, and a lot of it had to do with family lineage, uh, people inter intermarriage and being people being born as princes in certain areas. It play crusader Kings too, or you for no, it's a, yeah. it's, it's a crazy, crazy map to look at. And I'm excited to have it inspire in Kea, actually. Mm. Yeah, so what I'm currently at least hoping to draw um, is some sort of like Celtic mythology inspired uh, mini miniature setting, um, mostly islands, some mainland. Um, but I'm writing a sort of a mini, maybe five shot adventure. Um, ah. And I'm currently, let's see, how many pages of notes? <laughs> um, <laughs> two, three, four, six. Ooh. Only this big. Only this big. Hold on. Show me again. Oh, right, yeah. My, my awful scrolls, yeah. So I've got a barrow, some underwater. Like, I think that, it's where the, the for more I live. That's um, that's so cool. That's such a cool way to, to prep or take notes for a game. I was like, these are the locations of the adventures. So I was like, I'll just draw what they look like. I'll have a go. Yeah. A scroll. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Rune Hammer. Um, but as long as I, as long as I know what I'm looking for in the drawing and it makes sense to me, that's what matters. Yeah, exactly. Cause, cause what you're doing there by drawing those things, you're reminding your, your brain, Hey, you're going to want to describe the stalactites. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're going to want to remember that the, the rain that you see drizzling down, that's important like, for you to describe. These squiggles, like that, that obviously I'm talking about like a big, like kelp forest. Oh yeah. That's awesome. So, so it's underwater and it's a forest of yeah. kelp. With like sort of I'm already in. Atlantean type uh, oh, yeah. temples and buildings. And you're going to you're gonna have like serpentine behemoths like weaving their way in and out of the, the trees. You're going to have mm -hmm. small, like I say small, but they're probably big schools of fish that kind of shrink up and come close to each other and yeah. I'm hoping to get some inspiration when I go snorkeling in the uh, the Galapagos. You're a bastard. I'm filming it as well. <laughs> um, oh yeah. 
Yeah, I've got a yeah. GoPro. Well, an off-brand oh. GoPro. It's like oh, so it, awesome. it's a price. It does the same thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I'm going to be filming the entire time. Oh my gosh. I have the really awkward job here. I have a blank piece of paper and I just need to fill it. This so let me I'm gonna help you out with that. Roll a roll a set of dice over that piece of paper. Yeah, that's what I normally do. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm getting oh. a phone call from my old job. Anyone ever get those phone calls from their old job because they're still on some sort of call list or whatever? Oh yeah. <laughs> right. It's awkward. I have a bag filled with more bags. But in the bottom of this bag is a ton of dice. So I'm just going to splodge out, see what happens. And I'll move the camera now so you can see. Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the stream is not child friendly, I will swear. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's, sorry, it's the English way. It's the English way. Oh, see, I drew it backwards. I drew my building backwards. Oh, yeah, that's what it's turned out to be. Oh, that's perfect. Obviously, this is reversed and upside down. And you can combine, you can combine like those. There are, I see four dice pretty close together. That can be your big island. Yep. I think this might be the mainland, actually. Oh, so, yes, it would. Yep. That's like super. Bay. And then you should look at like, Greece. Yes. I was looking look at, at Greece. Scottish islands. Oh, that's the kind of geography I was going yeah. For. Um, I actually have a map of Scotland in this book, so I'm going to just yeah. go check it out. Oh let's, my gosh, yep. Let's see what I want here. I, know, I always like these polyhedral ones, the, not the cubes, but the, the other shapes, to be things. Like be important oh. landmarks. Yeah, got it. Like um, scattered eye as well, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love uh, the freaking 40K player yeah. over here. <laughs> That's, really That's kind of it. That should be the mark of where the land begins. You know, that one scattered eye pointing the other direction. I feel like... Hmm. hmm. Perhaps this should be like... I'm going to have a river that's like coming up this way. Following the scattered eye, let's move him. Coming yes. out today. I, I like the... D10s to, uh, to point the directions of things. And I use D8s to track convergences because if you look at the top of a d10 it's pointing in a direction so you can oh that's where the river's going if you look at the top of the d8 it's pointing in three directions mm. and so maybe there's a convergence of roads or rivers or whatever at that point and they're each going off into a, one of yeah, each of those three directions river coming from this d8 oh my god hey. and then i was like the d4s to be mountains oh yeah Obviously, because yep, yep. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, I'll mark that on. Obviously, what should this bottom scattered I be though? That is, I like the D fours to be ancient pyramids. Just there's always ancient pyramids in my land. I need to finish that actually. You know what place that I've got? Um, finish that. I gave, I gave up with this particular map. I was like, I just wasn't happy with it, but I love the lettering that I did. Uh, Oh, now nice. oh, I a little yeah. bit. It says the remnant on it. It does say the remnant. Yeah. I could have told you that, by the way. I know that. Yeah. So I got into some lettering for a while. Ah. I was doing this. It's really annoying that it's. Is it reversed for you or is it just for me? No, it's not. It's just for you. Is it good? Okay. Bravania. Yep. It's, yeah. it's good. It, Hangouts always kind of does that. It's a little wonky in that way. It's really strange. I did. Somewhere around here is. Sorry, this one's going to be a bit messy because it's used by players. Because um, they bought a map in game, so I'm like, I have to draw one. Um, so there's Bravania. Well, it's here, but with oh, the lettering down there. It's not very. Really, it's not. Oh, nice. Matter. It's just a small little region that they're in. Oh, cool. Um, uh, oh, I see the rivers now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So is that just the southern region? So this I is just. Yeah, so there's mountains in the north, which sort of, and in the, uh, whichever direction that is, east. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's sort of enclosing this little direction. And then, yeah, they're mainly sticking around the coast. 
but uh, yeah, it's just like a tiny little subregion of a different dark fantasy world. Yeah. Right. One thing I like about these old maps is they show you that there are mountains everywhere. They're just they're like th these these yeah. guys are the original Photoshop copy and pasters where they take one hill and they bop, 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 bop. We're going to put a bunch of hills here because there's a bunch mm -hmm. of mountains there. But of course, you know that there's an actual person sketching out each individual mountain. But if you look at them, it's like, gosh, there are just mountains all over Spain. Oh, yeah. J In the south, it, especially, it's it like absolute tons. Yeah, and of course the Pyrenees. It's just, it's it's absolutely nuts. Uh, it would. It's almost like a whole setting could be the size of Spain, mm -hmm. and with all those mountains, you could just make one setting regarding that. I have uh, it in my mind somewhere that Inkea is like the size of the UK. Yeah, right. it's 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 grown slightly to be kind of the size of Roman Gaul. Uh, France, the Netherlands, Germany, a little bit of you know Switzerland, a little bit of Italy, kind of it, a little bit larger in that way, but it's definitely a smaller setting when compared to something like Westeros or Aranoth, Aranoth our own uh, abs absolute tabletop Aranoth. I think you know the southern peninsula. It's the size of South America, uh, huge. Um, Dragon Grin's big. You know, there's there's a lot to having these big worlds because they 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 tend to make more sense realistically yeah. and it's it's a lot easier when you're world building to ask yourself what goes on at the edge when there are so many edges you know uh and kea is smaller but that kind of allows me to be creative in a different direction mm. and i think i think gloam is a little smaller too uh but that allows me to be creative in a way um, where it's almost like a pocket universe where I can say, hey, listen, this is a small enough region and no one's leaving or entering unless they are ex exceptional in the planes and whatnot. But uh, so it's almost like what would a society be like in just this small area uh, where, you know, monopolized by single by a single culture or a single idea? Um, and this is why I love history, man. I ask myself, you know, what what if what if I combined the Holy Roman Empire with the French Revolution, with World War One, and it creates this single entity that is Enkea that is just unlike anything I've ever seen and fun to build. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Yeah, so I am now deciding how my coastlines are going to be mm. i've marked out a vague sort of shape of the landmass here and a few islands dotted here and now you can't quite see it because i've done it really light lightly because i don't have a rubber or an eraser <laughs> no uh, yep i don't know where it is um <laughs> so i'm looking at these the uh sort of norwegian islands as well Oh really? But mostly, mostly Scotland. So I just love the um, the shapes of some of these. I might just steal that actually. <laughs> I actually I was thinking with your map of Scotland, I got to turn back to it to see. But um, you know, you're talking about the islands to the west, right? Um, I think that's Orkney. Yes. Yeah, the west West Isles. Okay. Um, it's almost like there, there are small islands at first and they branch off into this cool archipelago that comes off of yeah. Scotland. And then it, you hit another point where there are two big islands over there. Yes, we and the fourth one. Let me see, let me um, see. Yes. I can't quite see the name of this one. It's quite small. Mm. Let me go over. All right, Brandenburg. Let's draw something like you. An island. Is that an island? Yeah, I've just typed in a random thing. Um, <laughs> oh, this has a list of islands. Not go. Lewis. Lewis mm. is the one I want. Oh, the island they want. Oh, it's got standing stones on. 
I'm going to take that and run with it. Ooh. Standing yes. stones. Love the shape of this island. My God. This is where I wish I had a rubber. It's not way. Nope. <laughs> it's called an, it's called an eraser, Harry. But you rub things out. Listen, <laughs> there are there are some differences in our language. This, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I am, you erase things, but you, you but you do so by rubbing them. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You're both correct. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I'm more. Um, <laughs> Sure. <laughs> right. I'm I'm drawing regional boundaries using mm. dotted lines. Yeah, so I'm thinking about my my regional boundaries for the mainland because I'd quite like. I think islands tend to be more sort of, at least this size tend to be more unified, um, in their cultures. Ah, see, and that's cool because that's why I'm using dotted lines because they're boundaries, but everything exists inside the same empire. You know, it's very, like I said before, it's Napoleonic. So everything, mm -hmm. it's like, in in some ways, I always ask myself before jumping into world building in Kea, you know, what would it be like if, you know, the French Revolution were held in a vacuum where I can understand it and also where it succeeded and kind of created a global hegemony of peace or something like that like a, a but but allowing the holy what if the holy roman empire were kind of allowed to exist at the pinnacle of good existence rather than kind of falling to yeah. the wayside over time and then swept away to the to the bookshelves of history by napoleon and when napoleon it, just decided he wanted to own half of germany yeah that's uh listen <laughs> just decides yep. like I just want to own, own half of Germany now. There's something um, about the Rhineland and Alsace and Lorraine that th people yeah. just have never been able to agree on. <laughs> Strange. Wasn't there some yep. wars fought over that? I don't. Know. Yep. Hmm. Lots of wars going back forever. Franco-Prussian. Oh yeah, that's a big old one. Yeah, the next one was yeah. slightly bigger. Um, there's a the Thirty Years' War. There was a. This island's getting yeah. bigger than I thought. Let me see. I rolled it. It's so uh, you can't quite see it. Let me just mark it out. Yeah, I don't see it very well. So anyway, it's it's, it's I think it's cut off. Hold on. It's over here. Oh. It's over here. Yeah. It's over here. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> like what are you doing? This sort of size. Current. Nice. Um, I'm being Great. really light. <laughs> <laughs> Good. This is like this is the island where most of the adventure will take place. Um, and this is like if you decide to continue it, then you can like use this place. Um, yes. All right. Um. Let's jump to something a little no, more normally shaped. I love using historical maps. They're just regular maps. They're not even mm. historical. Actual maps to just kind of dictate where lines should go, because I, yeah. I find it easy to copy without copying. I can, you know, insert my own bits there, and it becomes after a few seconds, it becomes something wholly different. But it's yeah good so to use. I'm currently just using Google Maps as inspiration. Nice. Yep. Which uh, is always good. I'm using Westphalen. Westphalen, yeah, yeah. That's like middle to the. It's roughly uh, middle and then up a bit to the uh, the the west. I think if I remember my geography. I that is true, but I would also have guessed that given the name. Yeah, but I think it's yeah, it's in the middle, like not like right at the top. Yep. I think that was a fairly late arrival. If, or is that just EU four talking? I think it is. It might be. Yeah, this is a this is a still nation. kind of a, <laughs> it is. It is. 
Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah, this is what, – what, what year is this map taken? This um, – I actually don't think there's a year here, which is a, a bummer. But you still have the, – the Kingdom of Prussia is here, and the Electorate That's... of Brandenburg is here. So it's still it's a it seems like it might be a little later. Yeah, Prussia and Dutch wow. Republic and Austrian Netherlands. So not the Spanish Netherlands here. Oh, so maybe it's um when was the Dutch Revel? I don't remember. Sixteen fifty something rings a bell. Oh god, I love all whenever I type in some like country name, it always just comes up with like EU4 at the end of my yep. search. Oh. You're looking for a let's play. <laughs> okay, that's where I want this country or this region to end. Nice. So some of this is now becoming slightly more visible as I track along my lines. Hmm. Change my mind a little here. I think I want this to come a little bit more in. I'll share this in a little bit. Let me. So yeah, you um, really don't want to show all, off all that much, do you? Because this is like well, no, top it's, secret it's... next Kickstarter project after Glow. No, right? uh, hey, maybe. Uh, okay. But it's you know it's just sketches, so I have no problem sharing what I have because it might not be anything. This is just trying to yeah. derive inspiration. Um, but these are, I don't know if you can see this, I that's water at the north. And those dotted lines, those dotted lines are, um, it looks like it's flashing to me, very strange. Uh, the dotted lines are currently the regions <laughs> that I'm uh, coming up with. Um. <laughs> but this is, this is going to be, yeah, right? This is going to be kind of like the epicenter of the, of the empire, of the, the people's republic, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay. Get to the first line is too flat. Ah. Let me refer back to my inspiration. Yeah, so I've been reading a lot of, uh, in my spare time, um, like Celtic mythology. I just randomly went to a bookshop. Very like, cool. oh, that looks interesting. Picked it up. Just read it. It's great. I learned some things. Did learn some things. That's awesome. Like where leprechaun came from. Um, Teach me. I can't pronounce the name um, because I'm not, I, I don't speak um, it's Gaelic, isn't it? Yeah, Gaelic. Um, Irish, basically. Um, Gaelic is like a Gaelic, Gaelic is. Scottish version. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah. So I don't know. quote me on that, though. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, but basically he was like some, some god of, some like really famous god of war and some other stuff. And for some reason, lost through time, like, he has just slowly morphed into a leprechaun, which is really strange. Let me get a link. I'm going to link the book that I'm reading in uh, good in the description later on, but I'm sure I'll find it now. Good. Uh, let's see, Celtic, Celtic myths and legends. By Peter Beresford Ellis. It's 
pretty good. I also read uh, that Norse mythology by Neil uh, Gaiman. Amy? Oh yes, that's a great, great, great book. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And good, good little chuckle uh, at a lot of the stuff that Thor does. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> I, so I'm I'm still in the middle of it, but uh, that's I I recommend that book to anyone who's just looking to learn about the Norse myths. Yeah. Just yeah. get started. You know, anyone who doesn't really know too much in detail, just to get started, just read the Neil Gaiman books yep. or Neil Gaiman book because no, he loves them too. Yeah, I bought it on Kindle because I was going on holiday. Um, I have it on Audible. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 oh, I'm getting a book. I get a book now, I think. A free Audible book. Yes, I need to remember that. Um, but yeah, it was a lot shorter than I expected. I thought I'd be a few more. Yeah, it is short. I read it in the car journey to the airport. It was like, oh, <laughs> it's done. <laughs> yep. There's only like a three, four hour car journey. From where to where? I went from my house in like the southwest to Manchester. Mm -hmm. Mm. So yeah, not too far. But again, everything's not too far. One thing we take for granted in the United States is how massive our country is. Mm. It's very very interesting because I don't know it's it, to you know I travel to Washington like Tim Carney and and James Carney for Atcon they traveled to Washington from Florida and they were still in the United States and if you travel that distance you you travel from you know France to Syria you know they're, they're it's just that's yeah, crazy far so far and it's yeah it's just Europe is a really cool interesting place to, to read about, to study, because everything is so damned old. Mm. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, webcam. It's been fun. <laughs> it's been fun. Um, yeah, so I went to basically the, the birthplace of the uh, Renaissance on my holiday. I went to Florence. Ah. Vienna, and oh my, it was amazing. Um, I went to the Galileo Museum in Florence. Galileo gave me the finger. Um, <laughs> really? Flip the bird. He is eternally flipping the bird. Yeah. Is he really? Yeah, because he's they they when they I think they were moving his remains and a couple of his fingers fell off. So they're oh, just no. like let's put them in a jar and display them. <laughs> yeah, we'll display the fingers here, he, and he's a uh, he's just always upset yeah. about the way of things. For his telescopes. His actual yeah. telescopes, which, oh, as a scientist, so just, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, I don't know if I've told you this story. I may have actually said it on a stream before, but I'll say it again. We went to Belize and Guatemala uh, for our honeymoon, and we toured into the Mayan underworld, this long cavern where people would, in, in ancient times, like for us, for me, uh, people would walk through miles into this cave bringing pottery and they would stand in these dark rooms and they would make human sacrifices and smash pots to dispel dark spirits and just cool stuff like that. And at the very, very end um, of this labyrinthine underwater cave, it's part swim, part walk, hike, really. Uh, once you get to the very end, there's a skeleton. And I, I can't remember what it's called, but you can look it up. I think it might be called the crystal Crystal Skull. Girl. Skull. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, Indiana Jones is there. Shia LaBeouf is there. He's wearing a leather jacket. It's it's bad. The no, it's it, anyway. It's this human sacrifice. This little girl, like a child, mm. and on the back of her skull, there's an opening, right? Like that's been smashed in. And so we get we get there, and I ask, how was that caused? Was that the sort? Was that how they sacrificed her? Was this you know that was it like a a strike to the back of the head? And uh, the guy said, no, that was somebody's iPhone. <laughs> My God. Thousands of years old. This, it just, yeah, Whoa. destroyed the skull. Uh, <laughs> over a thousand. Anyway, the, uh, the one thing I couldn't get out of my mind and still can't is how we were, we had maybe a, a half a dozen other people with us mm. on this hike. 
how would it be to be that person who smashed the skull with the iPhone and have to walk back out of that two mile long cave with those six other people? And they're just like, I'm surprised that there wasn't a second skeleton in that place. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> a more recent yeah. one. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. No, that is. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can't. I can't believe that. It's. It's. Uh, yeah. Thinking it's of difficult. Like, <laughs> mines and stuff. I did not know this, but Oxford University is older than the Aztec Empire. <laughs> really? It's just crazy. That is crazy, and and yet makes sense when you play U four and yeah. Yeah, it's just like what the hell were the British doing? Think <laughs> about university. Like, I need to find like the actual date. Ten ninety six. Oh wow! Ten ninety six. That's that's thirty years after William the Conqueror. Hmm. There might be a when more did William the Conqueror date. die. What year? Um let us see. Yeah, well the, the, the Wikipedia is saying ten ninety six. Hmm. And it's when not William even the Conqueror oldest. Died. It's no. the second oldest. Which is the oldest? It's probably uh, something like shiny. Awesome. William died in 1087 at 59 years old. Italian is the oldest. Bologna. Wow, okay. Holy Roman Empire at the oldest university. Make sure really? you add something like that in. What's it called? Um, the University of Bologna. Got it. I, I okay. I'm not kidding right now. I'm only realizing it as I type this in. Yeah. That is absolutely where I've gone to research just what a university would look like in this era. Oh. I have been to this Wikipedia before. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you want to look at like awesome places, just Florence and Siena. My God, the oldest university in continuous operation. Let's see, notable people. <laughs> That's this is going to be a long list. They beat the UK by like eight years or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> and where is it located? It's located in uh, Italy. Yeah. Yep. North Italy. Listen, that that, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Italy was kind of a hub for a while. Kind of important place when it comes to European history. Mm, a little bit soft though. What's that? A little bit soft, as, uh, as well, I would say. <laughs> it depends on what era you're looking at. <laughs> it's just, it's all about food. It just makes you squidgy. It didn't stop the Romans. True. The, uh, I, I've been reading a lot about Corsica lately, and oh, yeah. Corsica has just a cool, aggressive culture for being such a tiny island it's just kind of fun to read about one of the things i'm excited to do with these boundaries is i'm actually taking those geographical expressions that i mentioned right the uh yeah you know, boundaries that are boundaries because that's where the river runs or that's where the mountain is and also including more unnatural boundaries like parallels and stuff that have been, you know, been decided because of truces of wars and whatnot um, and mixing both of them, because that's kind of, if you look at the, the map of the modern world, that is what you see. You see these older countries, which are divided by old geographical boundaries. And then you also, I mean, look at Africa, just look, look at, at the colonies. Yeah. They just, you know, the, the colonial yeah. powers, they just, yep. You get that, you get this, you get this. And and so it created this scissored up. Yeah, I mean, just look at the mass. United States. Yes. Yeah, you can absolutely tell just by looking at the United States. As you go, as the United States moves from east to west, so-called manifest destiny, yeah. that you see the states turn from small geographical states into just, you know, listen, let's just... 
let's just draw a line and call it South Dakota. Uh, Cause the other one is more North yeah. that's North Dakota. You know, it's, it becomes yeah, a lot like, easier. It's some like somewhat normal shapes when the, uh, like when it was owned by just goes to thoughts. Yeah. Goes yes. <laughs> and and uh, well, it's, yep. Boxes. boxes. The, it, the technology level has something to do with that too, yeah. because there was a time when that really wasn't possible to measure that straight line. And now it's, you can measure that thing down to the pixel in real time, real life. It's technology is dictates what you can do really. Um, let's zoom in and find a nice looking, looking island. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I wish I could get like <laughs> pictures of it. Oh, that's a nice looking island. <laughs> Not gonna let, lie. Me see. let me see. Um, let me. Oh man, you're using pencil because you're smart. Yeah, hold on. Let, let me just. No, I want to share my screen. Hold on. You need yeah. to see this. Oh, gotcha. Scottish Island. And uh, this one. Screen two. <laughs> oh, oh, two okay. screens. Yep. Oh, freaking cool. Yeah. The island and the sheep. Nice. Yeah. That's obviously That's amazing. famed for uh, sheep. <laughs> Yeah, clearly. That's such a cool island. I love stuff like that. Like, that's a picture. I Look at the cloud that's on it. Yeah. That I reminds me. like this as well. Let me see. But it's like that snaking rock. Yes. Yes. That could very, be like, very, I just imagine it right now, like a rite of passage to like get to this island. You have to cross this rock, these rocks. Yes. Like, I'm having that. Excuse me. Yep. Right, drawing that in. <laughs> yep. Do it now. Do it now. I'll be right back. One second. Cool. Stick in an island like right there. I'm thinking. Oh, nice. We got Nate in chat as well. Hmm. Let's think of a nice shape. What was the shape of that island I was just showing? Mostly round, okay. All right. Cool. I like the idea that there's a, cause there's, there's a forest in Enkea and it's called the thicket. And it's just endlessly dense, endlessly magical, endlessly tall. It, you just, you enter it and you, you get lost. And mm. it's kind of the, almost, ironically, the source of all life in the world, probably. Uh, and there's all of these countries, right? All these borders of all these little regions. And then around it is one long border. And it's one single country called Palisade that basically keeps everything out because there are obviously horrors and monsters and crazy things that'll drive you mad and steal your children out of their cribs and stuff just in these woods because everyone you know everyone knows what horrors exist in D D and other role-playing games um and so there's a, just one long slender country that surrounds all of the others and its sole position in the hierarchy in the in the existence of Enkea is to guard it um 
to guard Aurora, these kingdoms, mm -hmm. this loose amalgamation of kingdoms. Uh, I, I call them kingdoms, but that's 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 just a word to throw in because not all of them are actually kingdoms. kingdoms. Yeah, exactly. But that's it's kind of painting a cool picture of the the whole region. Mm. Yeah, I think I've seen um, a map before. I think you briefly released it as a download, and then I did. Well, and here's uh, the thing: I'm cursed with the okay. You're like wanted to improve it, kind of thing. This is something that the other Abtab guys also know. I'm cursed with the the plague of always changing my mind about something. And that's bad for an artist and a musician and a creator of any variety because at some point you have to leave the thing done. You have to say, this is done. This is what this is. I need to move on to the next thing. It's good in a way because I can see and I can know, wait, this isn't finished. This isn't what I want. This is um not even to the point where i can make the judgment of whether or not it's ready i feel like that's that's the blessing to the curse is i do know when something needs more work and it it just it just did it needed it needed that realism honestly it needed me to dive into it needed realism <laughs> it needed realism it needed me to dive into actual history books for a year to a, to two years to ensure yeah. that these weren't just loose borders. These weren't just things that yeah. I made up in my mind. These were borders that were laid down by the people who live in this place. And that's that excites me quite a bit. I can completely, completely understand that. So Good. I'm gonna mark on a couple of things here. I also like little Luxembourg-esque states, little tiny oh, yeah, little, little city little states. states. Yeah. Yep. Those are very fun to fill in little gaps and So, hmm, just thinking about where my locations are going to be. So, that's, what's this? Oh, that was my little one-page adventure that I still need to actually write. Huh. It's done. I just need to, like, write it. My life. Um, <laughs> I also have some Spire stuff in here as well. Um, yeah, so... This is where that like underwater temple is going to be. So like around the outside, of this it. this island here. Um, that's where. That's oh, going. nice! Oh, very cool. I'm like, yeah. The, the then there should be a barrow up this bit there, which would put the world tree over here. <laughs> You're going to be very, very excited for Dead Man's Guide to Dragon Grin. I am. You are. I am. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, my gosh. The world building that's gone into that book has been the coolest I've ever experienced. When did, that... when did you say that was going to be around? April, April. next year. Cool. Yep. yep. That's when I'm deep not too into far my off. research project. Not too far off. So and the cool, cool thing about Shadows Over Drift Chapel it was, it, is it was something that was already completely written. We just needed the art and the assets to put yeah. it into a book form. And, and, and it's, it's also a much smaller, uh, obviously much smaller than A Dead Man's Guide to Dragon Grin. And, and we've already made an adventure kit, so it won't require as much playtesting. And it's already been playtested. And so the fulfillment for Shadows Over Drift Chapel, the Kickstarter that's happening right now, is actually very, very quick. So yeah. the return, you're going to get it almost immediately. I say that the, there's actual dates listed <laughs> that you should pay attention to on the Kickstarter, but it's just January 2019. Yeah. For like four months. If my maths is correct. Yes. It's coming on. Oh my gosh. Soon. Wow. Bye -bye. Blown away by this. Well, this year has uh, taken off. You're right. Yeah, it's just begun for me. Yeah, like the academic year has just begun. That's true. So, because you're a student, yeah. um, I I want to throw this out there because we were talking about world sizes a while ago, yeah. and one thing that I want to throw into that discussion is that, uh, and I learned this from Sean Connors. Uh, I do not remember. 
his YouTube channel name off the top of my head, but I think it might just be Sean Connors. Anyway, he, uh, he has a video on his channel that I wish I could link. I'm so useless right now that where he basically makes an Island archipelago world, like a whole setting. Uh, and I'll share, I'll share this with you, Harry, also, uh, mm -hmm. just in case it'll be inspiring. But one of the things he says, this is the point I wanted to get to. One of the things he says in the video is this, uh, he says that this, uh, this is only the size of Greece. And a lot of people need huge worlds, but this works for me because if it worked for Homer and Odysseus, it works for you as a, as a GM. If you can write those kind of stories, those kinds of stories in a territory this small, then, then you can, as a GM, run an infinite number of campaigns and cool ideas in that sort of place. It doesn't have to be a massive setting. Yeah, I kind of like... I'm I'm beginning to sort of it's growing on me the smaller the smaller setting. Um you don't yeah, like I, I do love massive massive settings just for the maps purely. Um but I find like they're too they're too difficult to to run, at least for me. Like as yep. a game. Last time like if everything's compact, yeah, you can see actually towns on the the map and they're not all like crowded up together and yeah well and zoom in a little bit you know if it's like like i, I think it's all about the way map, you paint it. like 10. <laughs> yeah that's true it's all about the way you paint it too because you're you know you're telling on the map you know that you know these two islands are very very close together but when you're mm -hmm. running the game there it shouldn't feel that way to the players no it should feel like listen you're gonna have to wait a couple weeks for a boat not many boats go to that place you wait, you finally go. It should be an effort. Maybe not an effort for distance, but it should be an effort to get there. And that way, no matter how small the world is, it'll feel huge to any players who are exploring it's it. It's like if... Uh... Oh, there it is. So this island is actually not that far away from the coast. Maybe like half a mile or something. It's really not okay. that big. But I want it to like no. take a while to get out there because it's sort of looming out of the mist. That's the kind of feel uh, that I want. Love it. Um, you need to go to Alaska, man. The 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 mists and the fog and the mountains and stuff like that. Do you? Uh, is that the island that will? You were talking about kind of that narrow lead to it. Um, the island. Well, the island maybe it's a down, rite of passage. So that is. I've just drawn it on. Um, wait for it to. Stop whiting out horribly, and focusing is there. A sort of passage across. So you have to come like all the way through this, and then get down to that island there. Oh, and then this would be this like warrior's yep. temple or something. Um, there's a great. Uh, I can't remember the name of the character. I wish I had the book with me. Um, a, like this famous um, female warrior who was like undefeated um and she ran this like not temple but like academy for warriors and you had to go through like this big rite of passage to even get there and that, that was really cool especially that is really cool it's not just it's some dude it's it's a it's a you know for once it's somebody else it's a woman <laughs> it's usually like some dude runs this place but it's nice to see like a more a bigger variety of people i guess yes Oh my gosh, that's so cool. They're, it's very Last Jedi-ish. I, I love the island yeah. in the movie. It's really cool. It's the best thing about it. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't, I'm not going to talk about this here in the cartography. Uh, maybe if I'm mapping out galaxies or something. Mm, I would love to do that. I have this cool pen that I got in Washington. It's the Joker card. That's I love cool. it so much because I like oh. the Joker card. Uh, and it writes so wonderfully, and it draws so wonderfully, but it yeah. gets ink all up, all over me all the time. Is it, is it a fancy pen, pen, right? Yeah. Fire. Uh, it's it's actually you no, know, it's it's a ballpoint, and I usually don't like ballpoints, but it's actually not a real ballpoint. It has mm. a ball in the point, so I don't know how it's not, but it's a different variety. It's like smaller. It writes smoother. Um, yeah, very nice. So. I don't have a nice. I do have a nice pen, um, but it's just a just a fountain pen. Um, but 
I did something, the next best thing, or the slightly better thing, an amazing notebook. Comes in a little bag. Oh, it. And it's the most. See it. Oh, yeah. Notebook. Oh, my gosh. That is such a cool. That's perfect. And I'm using it for my field notebook, basically, for uh, a trip. That's and the perfect field notebook. It's actually the right way up for you as well. Um, yes. So and the pages are made out of like a cotton type thing. Yes. So they don't it bleed. Holds ink really well. Does um, each page have that kind of uh, thin paper also? What is that? Th for? This was just something like it was there originally. Okay. Got it. And I've tried like, oh yeah, I marked on some just tested on the front page, like pen. Oh. You can kind of see it, but not really. But it doesn't come through. That's amazing. And that was fountain pen. Oh God, that, yep, that, that doesn't show through, nothing will. The, that reminds me of a journal, I don't know if you've ever read Cloud Atlas, but there's a journal in the beginning of that book and throughout the book. And that's that sort of, I actually think he, that person who's writing in the journal might have been going to the Galapagos. Probably not, I think it was some sort of, but it was a Pacific Island. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, that's a field journal, man. Oh yeah. So that's going to contain all my notes and my thoughts. I'm going to use it as a journal as well as a field notebook. Um, so I have some crappy drawings of stuff in there. That'll be fine. I'm just going to get some pictures of the, uh, the Galapagos because that's a really interesting geography because they're all volcanic. Um, so they have a really like interesting shape. They're surprisingly arid. Um, yeah. Yeah, like they're in the middle of the uh, Pacific, but they're sort of right at the equator in like the dry spot. So mm -hmm. they're actually really, really, really arid. Um, let me share my screen again. If it will let me. Um, Like, look at that. It's like a almost desert. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, um, oh, that is so freaking cool. That's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. it's going to be a long trip for you. Right? Like, it has these giant... I don't know oh. if I'm cutting out or if you are, but it's me. I'm dead. Uh, okay. What's that? I, I my my everything died there. Um, oh no! Terrible. Oh, yeah, it sucks. Um, but yes, going there, and yeah, I will. I will have no internet for two weeks. Which it does suck because I do like to talk to people. Um, mm. I just want to do. I just want to do two weeks of solid gloating. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would. Right. Um, but you can do your two weeks. You can fill in. I'll just do two weeks of gloating when I get back. Yeah, and you know what you could do? You could even do it like day one, and then do it like one day at a time. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I will have a lot of photos to go through, so um, that will take some time. I, I've currently only got the storage capacity for like four and a bit thousand photos. Uh, yep. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. <laughs> I'm just going to be taking just tons. All right. Um, it's shaped as a land coast, I think. I'm not sure how I want to do this. So I want to think about like, I also want to think about like where a couple of different tribes will go. Hmm. Um, oh yeah. I also need to think about 
Um, so, like the Celts, obviously were at least on the main mainland, like England, most it's mostly England, were pushed mm -hmm. out by the Anglo-Saxons, and then Christianity yes. came, mm -hmm. and a lot of the Celtic mytho like mythos, was sort of brought into Christianity. Mm -hmm. so I kind of want to explore like that sort of another religion sort of coming in and trying to push the old gods out the way. Yep. The old gods there are uh, alive and kicking. At the Quad Eye ruins here in New, New Mexico, we have, you'll, you'll go and you'll see all of these ruins, old, um, basically the, 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 these locations, these settlements thrived under Spanish rule as mm -hmm. the Spanish would, um, Kind of use these places they built missions right in the middle of these old native settlements and eventually they became abandoned because the they, were, they ran out of food ran out of water those those reasons and um but you'll see these huge missions these huge like churches and uh, you know christian churches and then you'll right in front of it you'll see a pit called a kiva which is what the the natives here would uh, you know the first peoples would uh, that was basically their way to practice their faith and their beliefs. And, but it was right in front of the church because they would, it, it would be impossible for them to just say, nope, you have to worship this God now. And so it was kind of like, ah, okay, we'll, we'll fight our battles where we choose to fight them. And we'll let you worship in this way, as long as you're in the side of the church. And as long as maybe you stop doing that, because that is not good enough. You know, we don't want any of that in our faith. So, but you can do everything else. It's a very common practice just throughout history because yeah. it kind of makes it makes conquest easier. Oh yeah. For sure. But uh I mean we I, just <clears throat> got the population addicted to opium. That's <laughs> also one way. It works. Yep, nice drug dealing empire. <laughs> So I, I kind of want to do one more thing with this map before I close it up and stop. Oh, yeah. um, one of the things I find interesting, if you look at, uh, pretend you're playing Hearts of Iron 4 for a minute, Harry. Look at Poland, and you'll yep. see it has, you know, it's a big mass, and then it just kind of has a little tail that comes up to connect to the Baltic. Mm -hmm. Almost like, almost like the League of Nations decided, hey, Poland needs a port in the Baltic Sea, so we're going to just give it you know this this baltic port i kind of want that in this world this the, in the nk i want a a country to be given a port and i want that port that length of land to divide another country from mm. itself and so yeah. i actually think that's what i'm going to do Absolutely. with i think um some stuff like um like Hong Kong, places like that, where it's just like there's a random port from that's owned by a different country, like smack bang in the middle of another one. Yes. Surrounded on all sides. There's another one. What's what is it? This uh, in Goa, mm. in India, this uh, Portuguese, just randomly in the middle of like I think it, obviously British Raj, and then. India and they didn't give it back until like quite a while. It's uh, mm -hmm. 61, 1961 was when they gave it back. So, yeah, stuff like that, like just like random chunks of land which then have some sort of story about how they got there. It's great. I think that's what you're looking for, like some history as to why the borders look the way they do, not just geography. Yep. Because geography um, sort of implies that they're sort of fresh or really, really old. Yeah, exactly. And what, I, what I'd recommend you do if you want to do something kind of in order, build, world build in order a little bit, mm. is do what I did with Enkea and just kind of, you know, make your map. Look where the mountains are, draw geographical boundaries and stuff, and then let it sit for a while and then ask yourself, okay, this world, the whole world went to war and one side won. 
how are they going to divide up the land? And then just kind of, you know, ask yourself these questions of how would this be divvied up? What would the losers still have afterwards? Yeah. Um, what would they, you know, what, what would the coastline look like? Are there colonies there? Are those people who were once co uh, colonists, are they now, did they give birth to a generation which gave birth to a generation which gave birth to a generation and basically fully populated these coastlands? Uh, what, you, what you want is just to make NK an EU full map and just <laughs> let the AI go nuts. I'll tell you what, Harry. Yeah. Someday there will be a fully, a done, completed, out there NK map. If, if that map ever gets turned into an EU4 map or a CK2 map or something, I will retire because that's, I mean, there's no, there's no other reason to live in my mind. That's, that's the, that's the apex. Yeah. <laughs> I love doing that though on EU4 where you click random new world. Yes. Although it's not actually random. It's just picking from a set of like 20 something. Um, yeah. It doesn't actually generate anything new, which is a bit sad. Um, it is. But that's also really complicated. <laughs> But yeah, so just I let it go nuts and just to get inspiration because like generates like brand new countries on there, like crazy names. It's fantastic. It's amazing. They actually just re recently, I don't know if you're talking about this, but the recent patch. Uh, uh, roll the ten. Uh, there was a recent patch that allowed you to randomize the entire world. Oh, yeah. And also there's one that allows you to like not randomize the entire world, but make it just a little different. So different powers are in charge and stuff like that. But there's a new bit also where you can just, you randomize the whole world and there are, you know, you'll have uh, uh, Tengri over in Ireland. You'll have um, the, you know, Sunni Islam up in Scandinavia. It just really goes bonkers in a lot of ways. And it freshens up for people who play a lot of that game. Yes. I don't need a lot of freshening up because I don't play it as much. But play a lot of that game. I'm yeah. still a newbie, though. Yeah. You, so, all right, this is what I have. You reached like and two thousand now. This is not final at all, but this is what I this is what I'm going to finish up with. This is going to inspire the next drawing. Uh, it's basically, you know, the water. You see that, and you see those boundaries. Oh yeah. Of all of these countries flashing. <laughs> yeah. You see the outer boundary on both sides, palisade. And actually, all the way in the bottom, I, I think, and this is again not final, but I think south is just going to be an endless desert. I, I love the—I've always loved the idea of Enkea on one side being uh, all ocean, mm. just endless islands and ocean, all going towards a certain point. Which I, I might actually—I'll do an ab tab to noon tomorrow to 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 talk about that. And on the other side, an endless desert, just. Uh, you know, the people who have journeyed that way, yeah. they either come back because they run out of supplies or they never come back. And the same goes with the ocean. Either they never come back or their their canoes come back with their bodies in them because they died of starvation somewhere along the way. So it and oh, and the long livers, the elves and those uh, people who live for hundreds and hundreds of years, those ones that make the journey, they never return. Like that's just. Mm. a fact of the matter so who knows what they found there i love those little storyline hooks that make you think oh it could be anything could be and valinor. then oh. like that yeah, could be valinor could be a big yeah, freaking could, hole in the sky that takes you up and shreds you could just be they could find like dragon grin or something they could find like dragon grin we know already with the winds of sir Selene campaign mm -hmm. that it's canon that people from other realms can get to Enkea. yeah and I, I think that makes a lot of sense. It would take Quint Rec Copper Mist a lot of work to uh, to get all the way to Ankea though. Yeah. Trying to think of trying to think exactly of where he landed and where he came from. But anyway, it'll be a, it'll be an interesting world to explore, man. Mm. Right. We've gone for like an hour and a half now, I think. Close to it. Oh yeah. yeah man. Um it's probably about time to call it a night. It's wrap it half, up. Half past twelve for me. Um, yep. Be up in seven hours. Oh, yep. When do you leave? 
I leave on Monday, I believe, oh. at 11 in the evening. Oh, man. Which is, I get on the plane at 11, which is quite nice. I can just sleep. Yep, that is that is actually nice. You can sleep. I and then I hours though in an airport. You do. Oh, go God. Columbia. Maybe you'll uh, make sure you put EU4 on your laptop. I, I could never run that. <laughs> No, I'm gonna make sure you put, put like mines Dungeon or something like that. Th those mines ain't gonna sweep themselves. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm probably gonna put like Darkest Dungeon or something. I said to I said to my friends like, oh, I should bring D and D and just play it one night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could do. You could uh, run a game inside the airport. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Man. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for doing the stream and thanks for having me on. This yeah. has been fun. It's always fun just to run on the chat, even though this is what we do and every week anyway. Exactly. Um, <laughs> no doubt. Usually playing Overwatch at the same time. Um, yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. We'll have to we'll have to jump into a game. I actually don't know if we're going to be able to do it. Uh, no, I can't do it this week. <laughs> You're busy. With this is this is a yeah. I'm actually I'm busy all the time now, and I'm busy this weekend too. So. We might not play until after you get back. I hope yeah, that's, that's not the case. I'll try to find an hour or maybe, something. Maybe like Friday night or something. Let's try to make that work. Uh, it yeah. might be Friday your night. <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll see how it works. This and people time. watching are are experiencing the the real life of Barker yeah. and Harry, yeah. not being able to schedule games. Exactly right. <laughs> um, so hopefully, yeah, we can do this again in a few probably a few weeks. Um, it's always good fun. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll uh, catch you next time. Oh yeah, and go back the uh, the Gloom Kickstarter, the uh, adventure ad adventure. Oh kit. yeah, the adventure Shadows kit. Shadows over drift. Chapel. Shadows over drift chapel. Yes, yeah, thank back. you, Harry. Oh. Yeah, go, uh, you won't regret it. No, it looks amazing. Oh. I'm freaking excited about it. I think I was like the twenty second or twenty third backer. Got in there straight uh, away. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.